Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first Our Voice podcast. Tonight, we have for our first guest, a very special guest, one of our own, Shim Perlman, a therapist what, what? Hello. and a staff member here at Our Place, a very important member. i um, very excited to have him as the first guest, blessed indeed. Um, how are you doing tonight, Shim? I'm good. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, so what's this uh, podcast about? Yeah, so, you know, funny enough, we're still, you know, going to try and find the road that we want to go in. But, you know, we're sort of looking to um, talk a bit about our place. Um, you know, obviously mental health. Um, but not just like the regular stuff. A little bit more of like, you know, adolescents, teens, which is what we deal with here at our place. Mm-hmm. So stuff that revolves around that. Um, one of the goals also is to eventually have... Teenagers bring their story to light, um, talk about themselves. I mean, you know, everybody, all adults are always talking about teens. But when do we get to hear from the teens themselves? Right, and that's why you brought me on to hear from the teens. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no. we first want to introduce the program and, you know. No, you're right. I hear what you're saying. Like, first introduce who we have here working with the teens. Exactly. And then we can get into the meat and potatoes of yeah. who this place is about. Exactly. And, you know, just also just shoot the breeze sometimes you know Mm -hmm. let the world hear what the members of our place have to say (laughs) i agree i agree fully a lot of people just you know i tell them i work at our place and they're like where's that i say it's on uh you know m and 18th they're like i never saw any place there i'm like yeah because it's it's in the basement (laughs) and there's no marking outside you know you just and they're like really what is it you know and like we just keep talking and there's a lot of you know, I tell them there's like a, tons of kids that come every night and there's uh, there's games and there's dinner every night and a full gym and music room. It's like, it's unbelievable. And they're like, really, I can't believe this thing kind of exists. Uh, yeah, it's kind of one of those hidden gems uh, yeah. in Brooklyn. I literally had this last week. Somebody came over to me and like, oh, so what do you do? So I said, yeah, I work at our place. Like, oh, is that like on Avenue M, like between like 16th and 17th? I'm like, actually between 17th and 18th. And they're like, is it like a storefront? And I'm like, actually between 18th and 19th. Yeah, I was going to correct you there. (laughs) See, by the way, even I don't know. We don't know where (laughs) we we work. It's like um, the the room of uh, requirement in Harry Potter. Right, (laughs) It changes locations. (laughs) (laughs) So the person said to me, like, where is it? And I said, well, you know, very juice. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, so we're literally right next door. And they're like, there's a door there. I'm like, so you've probably passed it by a million times in your life. And you had no idea what was going on there. <laughs> there's a home care agency that works above us. I did uh, not know that. Yeah. Yeah. They're also not that. Well, I shouldn't say also. We're very popular. They're not so popular. <laughs> I hope no one from there is listening to this podcast. Oh, boy. <laughs> Um, so, Shim, you've been here a lot longer than me. <laughs> so, well, I'm, all, I'm here two and a half years, I think. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, wow. So I only, you eclipsed me only by about maybe six months, seven months. Yeah. All right. So maybe you can, you know, tell us in your words and then maybe I can adjunct of, you know, the audience who doesn't know what, what we are here about our place. Well, the first thing I would say is, even though I've been here half a year, maybe, or whatever, longer than you, you know, as you know, your experience as uh, someone who works here, you walk through the doors that first day that you're working here. And and you you know that sense when you start a new job and you're you're all scared and everyone's kind of looking at you and not saying hello. They're just kind of, what is this guy doing? What does he want? Um, You don't have that here. No. You know what I mean? It's like... The day you're working here is the tenth year you're really working here. You know, you're you're in the family. That's the kind of sense you get right when you walk through the door. You, you know, I see you, I see Bruce, I see Chaim, of course. Chaim runs this place yeah. uh, behind the scenes. Um, yeah, it, it is a family. Like, there we're helping kids, but we're also uh, a family for each other. Yeah. I really, really believe that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that point that, that that you said, that that first point, I mean, all the points hit home, and obviously I agree with that, but that first point, and, like, I never really thought about that, but, like, the first day when I, I remember I interned here, I don't know if mm-hmm. you remember. Yeah, I did. When I, when I interned I did. here, so, like, the first night, I think it was a Tuesday night, and Yehuda told me, Yehuda Klinkowitz told me to come down here, and I show up downstairs, and the, the first thing that happens, I, I get a hug from, like, four people. 
just like, hey, what's up? I don't know your name, but you're awesome. And like one of them was Sani. Right. One of them was Yehuda. Um, I think Mark Olavashalm was still here. Mm. So he like gave me a hug and I'm just like, I, I don't know who you guys are, but like this is awesome. And like literally by the time I was done the interview and everything, and then like I'm walking outside and like just everybody, like just one guy comes over to me and goes, yo, you want to play pool? Right. I'm like, dude, I don't even like whatever. But yeah, sure. Like I looked at you and he's like, yeah, yeah. I just went and played pool with the guy. Yeah. But that's the same experiences that that the guys here have. They they come in and for the first time in their life probably just walk into a room filled with teens and adults and just feel like free. And like these kids are in schools, yeshivas, all around this neighborhood. Or even uh, those not in schools. Yeah, and not in school. And they just walk in feeling like, you know, they're allowed here. And they could just be them, which is, which is really cool. Yeah, I grew up in Far Rockaway. We didn't really have this this kind of place, you know. Um, although I knew about our place because oh, really? my brother is Sani. Right. Oh, by the way, everybody, Shim's brother is Sani. <laughs> <laughs> Shim is his own person. <laughs> I have a lot to live up to, but uh, Sani um, has been working here for twenty five years. He he created the atmosphere here. Right. I gotta give him all of that credit. I actually never knew how awesome Sonny was until I worked here. Really? Yeah. This is like I discovered where Sonny, my brother, where his handiwork is. That's it's, awesome. It's here. It's so interesting because like as a sibling mm -hmm. and like like we all have brothers and sisters and like we're close with them. We're not like some of us are, you know, we have siblings that we're close with and some of us we don't. But, like, even the ones we cl were close to, like, we don't see them in their place of work generally. We don't right. see them where they're at their most comfortable sometimes. And, you know, like, I could tell you, I don't know. I don't see that about my siblings at work. I mean, I, whatever, but. It's a whole part you don't know about them. Yeah. An entire world. I always knew Sonny was, like, a, you know, highly talented individual. But I never got to see his real work, his real, his real stuff. I knew guys always used to come up to me like, yo, you're Sonny's brother. He's so cool. And I'm like, I know, I know. But like, whoa, that's quite a, quite an intense reaction. Like, what's he doing? I come here and I see, I see, I see what's going on. I see his philosophy at work. Um, he's done, he's talked a lot about his philosophy on other podcasts like Mislabeled, uh, his own brainstorm his with Sonny, shout out. Brainstorm with Sonny Perlman, that's another, that's his. Uh, he talks about his philosophy a lot. And this place is living proof of his philosophy. Yeah. So let's, yeah. I mean, I want to talk about the place a little bit. What yeah. are you interested in? Like, well, you're here with me. We're both right. experiencing this together. Yeah. Honestly, I want to ask you, what, what's your, what's your experience here? So my experience is it, it's 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 so like you like you touched on about family and it's not just with the staff but it's with the the teenagers here as well is that we're trying to create an environment not just a safe space which is sort of like when somebody goes oh what's a youth drop in center like people who don't know what our place is they'll say well, what do you do right mm -hmm. i don't know what you tell them like what you do at nights whatever i say like oh i work in a youth uh, a teen drop in center and they're like what does that mean i said well you know in the neighborhood you know, there's unsafe things at night or there's whatever's going on mm -hmm. or even just a place where like, you know, if their situation at home is not that great and they don't always get a hot meal at home for dinner, you know, they come here and there's hot food every night. There's, um, there's activities, there's a gym, there's pool tables, ping pong tables, um, playstations, a TV. Um, besides for the therapeutic aspects, I'm just saying stand like what we do is we're creating an environment where people can be, can express themselves and not just, you know, express themselves in, you know, a negative way, but in a positive way as well. I mean, obviously we want the positive way, but, right. you know, sometimes they could just come down here and people will see them for who they are and, and appreciate them for who they are. That's the goal. And so much of what I see is that like, besides for maybe the first time, a lot of times the teens come down here and they're a little bit like, you know, they're they're not so comfortable unless they're being brought down by a friend or anything like that. When they get, you know, after like a time or two that they're down here, it's like they've, like you said, it's like we've been down here for 10 years. And I think that's such an incredible 
environment we've created for a safe, fun, also a helping space. Yeah. I mean, let's say, let's say you were, you know, well, let's say you were trying to recruit people. You know, it's one of the reasons I think for this podcast, it's your podcast, man. So it's our podcast, hence oh. our voice. <laughs> Cheese alert. <laughs> I love it. It's very good. Listen, Trish, love the name. It makes it so easy. Everything just starts with our. It's like we have, uh, I don't know, our village, our which place, is an extension of our place right. under the umbrella. Our place, our voice, our geriatrics. Oh, <laughs> are we talking no, about that? No, no, we're starting a geriatric program, but <laughs> we're working. <laughs> we might. <laughs> anyway, uh, continuing. Moving on from there. Just joking. No, the truth is, is that we, because of our success, because of our success, we have guys that, um, you know, they, they hang on to us for forever. We have guys who come in to visit. Um, there's a guy here tonight who's been here since he's a teenager. He just comes around just to say hi. Right. Because he is just, it's one of his homes. Yeah. You know? Uh, so once you come here, you know, 20 years ago, you're still going to want to come back. And there really is only one reason for that. It, it's because there is, and, and Chaim, Chaim really drove it home for me. Um, there's zero judgment and no expectation. Yeah. Zero. I once asked Chaim, um, someone was upsetting me. I said, what do I do? One of the guys, I was getting upset. He said, I said, what do I do? You know, he says, drop your expectation. Any expectation that you have, let it go. I was like, oh, I was not upset after that. I totally yeah. dropped it. It was fine. And it was a phenomenal lesson for me. And the funny thing is, by the way, is that we're, we're both social workers here, right? Yeah. And this is not something you learn in school. Mm -mm. You can learn even if you're working in a clinic, pretty much because you're not interacting on that level. You know, even if you're a therapist in a clinic or you're working in a school or other things like that, you're not in an environment like this where the kid feels the most comfortable. And even if he's bothering you or something like that, you're still not like, it's not like here where everybody's at ease. Mm -hmm. And, you know... Dropping your expectation just allows you to just, you know, also allows you to see them for who they are, regardless of, you know, that nuisance, yeah. let's say, or right. that, you know, expectation is that like, well, you know, he's here, he feels comfortable, he wants to, you know. Right. And you also have to know, like, the guys are coming in with uh, all sorts of backgrounds. Yeah. We see them here a couple nights a week or whatever. Some of them have some seriously tough backgrounds and they're going to test they test each and every one of us, like, all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. Stuff that goes on here, sometimes it, it's not bad stuff. It's just you see that they're testing you. They want to see if you're going to be loyal yeah. to them. And, uh, you know, and we are time after time. And that just drills at home. Um, so it's consistency and the loyalty as well. That's what we're shooting for. Yeah. Um, you, 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 you mentioned that point also about like Chaim driving home the point about, you know, what, what mm. we do here and, and, you know, the, these guys coming back also years because this is their family. I think Sonny told me this, um, when it comes to like one of the, one of the steps of recovery that he was telling me, um, you know, our village and, you know, mm -hmm. whatever is that, um, one of the most important things and I, I believe it's part of the 12 steps is a sense of belonging mm -hmm. and what we have created here as a family. And regardless of, 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 you know, the backgrounds of anybody here, you feel a sense of something. When we have a Hanukkah party, when we have a Thanksgiving dinner, when we have a Purim party, or even, you know, a, a Tuesday night learning thing or, or anything like that, and a guy feels a sense of, 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 of safety and sense that he can come here at any time. It could be he hasn't shown up here in two years, but this is a place that he feels connected to. And where he he belongs, so to speak, and that is one of the one of the more important parts of of you know feeling a sense of community. Mm -hmm. You know, like one of the example that he gave me was like a, a like you know belonging to um, religion to a sense, like regardless of religious status, but attending a Shabbos meal or you know a Hanukkah party or something mm -hmm. like that, and that makes you feel a sense of community and culture. And we've sort of created our own culture here. Oh, it's more. Than it's it's almost a, an entire world. Yeah. And I look forward to coming. I mean, who looks forward to going to work? No, I do. 
Yeah. Yeah. This this job, not your other one. <laughs> right now, this is my only one. Oh, sorry about that. No, no, no. No, I remember you were working another job before this. Oh, that was that an internship? That, yeah, that was an internship. I was in a clinic. Okay. I know previous before that I was a teacher. Oh, really? I don't know if you knew that. No, I taught in Chassidish Elementary School. Oh, I loved did. it. Did you? Yeah, I did. It was really, really cool because I got to teach them by mistake that evaporation is called condensation. <laughs> <laughs> it blew their minds. <laughs> and they, they had, didn't know the difference because uh, they're in fourth grade. And you don't always learn that until like fifth grade. But like, I totally forgot when was the last time I was in school. I mean, right. when you're getting your master's for something, they don't teach you about condensation and evaporation. It's true. And then I came home and I was like all excited. And like I told somebody in my family, they're like, Ooh. It's evaporation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I also taught Hasidic kids. I did the title one. Oh, teaching. you did? Yeah, I had. I did a year and a half. I feel like it's so funny because it's so many people in the mental health field have done some sort of teaching at some point. That's because yeah. mental health doesn't pay money, and you need to supplement <laughs> it with another job. And Title One has been great kids for that. Still become mental health professionals. <laughs> so you're yeah. saving the world. Yeah, well, what's cool about social work is what I'm realizing is that I also have a second job. Right. I work, I do, like, I work for an insurance company, basically, doing assessments. And um, what's cool about social work is that it kind of, ex it's a large field, very yeah. large field. I'm seeing, um, there's, there is money to be made, you know? You have to be able to, like, kind of scoop it around. You got to get comfortable, man. Yeah, I know. Um, this AJ's. Is like I, I took the, the big papa seat. AJ's sitting on the couch. <laughs> and these couches have no legs on them. There's no legs on these couch. But who took the legs? Where did they go? It's our place. You don't it's ask questions. It's our place. You don't ask questions on anything. <laughs> well, no actually, legs. well, finally, we're redoing the place. Bar Hashem. Yeah. And it's looking awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. You know, I'm very excited. I think we should talk about that for a little bit also. What What is your, what are you excited about in terms of the renovations that we're doing here? I think that it's, it's. You know, I'm saying what what in specific, what renovation that they're doing is you going to be your most exciting. Oh, you what want you, me to talk about that? Yeah, I want you to get in it. You, you want me to talk about your specific idea is no. what we're saying. I mean, it was a collaborative <laughs> effort, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Sonny's going to let us <laughs> release this yet. <laughs> why not? Go for yeah, it. Why not? I mean, might as well. Yes. So one of the things besides for we're redoing all the floors and everything like that, mm -hmm. you know, we're putting in brand new floors. It's going to look gorgeous. We painted the ceilings. Um, is this brand new, like, what do you call it? Home theater mm. in the back. Yeah. With stadium seating. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Oh, I don't, at least I didn't have to censor you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was gonna, we have a censor button. It's a bleep. Yeah. It's good thing you didn't touch it because I was on the wrong. It <laughs> was on the wrong page. Oh, you have to oh, it's, cycle pages. pages. Yeah. Show us the sound. I'm just sorry. Just, yeah, no, no, no. Hold on. Let me just get cool. in there. You. <laughs> <laughs> this is a kid friendly podcast. I did not put it under explicit <laughs> on the thing. That's <laughs> so funny. It's pretty funny. By the way, there are so many other sounds, which maybe we'll get to, but I think mm. this one we should keep a little serious. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this home theater thing, and then, you know, we're going to be redoing, we're going to be making like a chill area on the side, like a little bit of like a living room. Um, I think that's going to be pretty cool. Um, you know, it's it's also just freshening up. You know, this place has been around for 20 plus years. I think it wrote, they're coming out in 1998 that we opened up. 98, maybe. I believe 98. Um, and just getting like just a fresh coat of paint and brand new floors, all new stuff, pretty much new sofas, new furniture, mm -hmm. and a new big dining room table. Really? Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. Hopefully we have them on like duplicates because they're not going to last very long. The, well, we're looking to buy furniture that'll last, uh -huh. but being that that's pretty difficult unless you're buying from like a homeless shelter because they have like metal stuff and you know even the commercial stuff they got to replace right so you know we'll probably buy stuff that you know we'll call up the company and be like hey remember model number g9610 we need another one <laughs> get it to here get it get it to us by tuesday <laughs> <laughs> but yeah all these remodeling stuff i think it's new i think it's it's also you know we've seen an influx um with the hiring of new staff 
um, you know, and, and the addition of, you know, I mean, you used to just be a therapist here, correct? Yeah. And now you're on the floor four nights a week, mm -hmm. right? Um, Danielle, Friedman, Bruce. Yeah. Um, besides for the other interns, which I may be leaving out or whatever, but there's an influx of staff um, and the splitting of the program. You know, where we have a teen program now specifically that only does trips and activities, 14 to 21. And there has been a, a pretty large percentage of, of new faces and old faces that have been returning. And we got to, you know, we got to, we got to update. Yep. And I think that's really exciting. Um, you know, it'll be, it'll be weird to see the place looking different than what it used to do. But mm -hmm. <laughs> I think this will, this will be, I mean, I saw the floor. I don't know if you saw the new floor yet in the back. No. I mean, it's under construction for everybody listening, but it's it's awesome. It's it's already making me exciting. Yeah, I yeah. walked in tonight and I was just smiling because I walked to the back. There's big plastics hanging everywhere in the back now. But and I I pointed this out to one of the guys when I walked in tonight. I said, "Isn't it awesome that we're not closing up for this construction? Like literally half the place is shut down because of the reflooring." And it's packed. And it's packed. I mean, it's even more packed than usual because the space got smaller. Right. We have the game area still open. By the way, literally a <laughs> sliver of gaming area is yeah. open. <laughs> but I'm saying the fact is, is that we don't want to close. You know, this is where the guys, um, this is where the guys like just come and live, like live for real. You know, they don't want to be at home alone or home, you know, going through their regular difficult evenings but, <laughs> whatever issues i i just want to i just want to interrupt you for yeah. a second if 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 that weight dropping noise the ambient <laughs> that weight. ambient noise <laughs> you know the, we're, we're basically at 10 feet away from the workout room for those who don't know yeah it's like we're we're, we're like having a podcast in a construction zone <laughs> <laughs> i think that's first time ever it's it's it makes us unique but I like it because we are recording during working hours, which we were allowed to do. We were given permission. Right. Um, and we paid homage to the grand leader. <laughs> yes, I am. But I'm saying it's like in the background, what you're hearing is is guys just bouncing off each other and having having a great time, like bouncing off ideas. Uh, I always said, like down here, um, one of the bad parts is that we have Wi-Fi. I think because guys getting on their phones, it's it's a it's a, it's been an issue in yeah. our new generation. But but still, wow, most of the time, wow, you, wow. Am I dating, dating yourself a little bit? <laughs> you gotta admit that you know when you walk into a, a small area and everyone's just sitting on their phones talking, it's true. Just sitting without talking, like there's there's a certain lack of uh, feeling there. There's a lack of life. Everyone's in their own world. But it doesn't happen a lot here. That's the thing. It's energetic. It's like there's something going on, pretty much. Yeah, something in the air. Something in the yeah. But but it's funny because you mentioned that I happen to be I happen to be a big believer in um, when you uh, I don't know if there's a little bit off topic, but like when you when you're with somebody that you feel close with, I think I know I you know I think it's on topic because we are a family here. When you're with a family member, sometimes or and you're sitting in the car, and if you're comfortable with that family member, you could sit in the car for 25 minutes, not say a word to them. You're comfortable mm. in their presence. Right. Right? Yeah. True. And, and I think that, okay, being on your phone is not the exact same thing, but I think there's a certain comfort level of guys here that they could sit on the couch with their friend and they're just relaxing, you know? Yeah. And, and they're, they're I, on their phone. Right. But you could, a lot of times I don't see it for longer than, unless it's like quiet in the back and like, you know, there's some sort of obscure basketball game going on on the West Coast at 1045 at night and there's just one guy laying on there on his phone. Right. Most of the time, the guys are interacting with each other. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm saying. I was more pointing out the the culture of our days, but oh, you know, I, of yeah. nowadays. I was defending them, Shim. But but yes, <laughs> I'll defend them too. That I don't see very often guys sitting on their phones for a long time here. Um, and we never ever would say to a kid, "Put your phone away." Or there's barely any rules here. Instead, it's not much. No drugs. No weapons. Those, those are the rules. Yeah. You know, otherwise, and we, we do have like a certain sense of like, um, you know, here guys have been bullied in their lifetimes. Uh, and that could be a reason why a guy is here. A guy like that would feel extremely comfortable here. A kid who was bullied. Yeah. A 14, 15 year old kid in school. Like he'll come down here. The, the staff live by a code. 
we were taught this code, but we, a lot of us were picked because we lived by this code before we even got here, knowing that bullying is, is just something we don't do. Abhor. Yeah, abhor. And, um, Did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah, good enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> A bullying is 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 out, you know, yeah. and 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 when and when we hear it, we remind the guys like, you know, it's just not something our place stands for. You know, we stand for love, we stand for no judgment. Yeah, you know, and and they stop doing it themselves just just by watching and seeing that the staff Observant. live live by that code. And that's and 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 that code latches off another thing, which is that role modeling yeah. a little bit. Because we present ourselves in a way like literally like you were saying before about when you lowered your expectations with that guy, right? Going back on that story. Yeah. Right. When it didn't phase you right, right. afterwards. Right. That guy notices and, and he'll stop his behavior because it's not hitting home the point that he wants to or, yeah. or anything like that. And that's also setting a precedence of where you're, you're demonstrating of how to act like an adult. And we're not we're not trying to make these kids grow up overnight. Right. You know, and we're not trying to teach them anything. We're trying to be positive role models where, you know, and, and sometimes for some of us, it's difficult to, to be positive role models. Yeah. You know, but the goal is to, you know, create a healthy, positive image that, you know, they can look to. Because I, th I think Yehuda tells me this all the time, is that like a lot of these guys don't have healthy role models in their lives. And when they look, and they look to you, you know, I, he always tells me like, we're like their fathers and mothers, so to speak, in a lot of cases, yeah. you know, we're like, we're like parents to them. You know, they, they look to us, they test us, right? Parents are, they're, they're looked to for, for advice, right? We get asked advice questions all the time, not a, not a standard therapeutic practice, but we're more in, in a different, you know, environment, mm -hmm. but we get asked for advice all the time. We're looked up to were tested constantly and were looked to to behave a certain way and to set a certain precedent that you know they can look to and say okay this is somebody who I respect mm -hmm. you know it's yeah. like it's like one one you know one thing that I always you know I, I had a story once upon a time mm -hmm. I think I'm going to say this I'm going to change some details in the story um, obviously no names, but, um, Wait, you're going to soften the story up. No, I want to hear all the dirty deeds. Yeah. So there was, there was one night, uh, this is still when I was interning here. Um, and, and some of my guys shout out to my guys that were with me for, since day one, the, the younger teens, you know, um, you know, yeah. um, one of the guys was, um, Something was going on upstairs, you know, stuff happens upstairs all the time. Like outside? Outside. Okay. You know, sometimes there's violence. <laughs> right. Well, violence, I mean, most of the time it's just like maybe an argument. Yeah. I wouldn't say like. No. So cause this time something got a little yeah, bit. Yeah, there was uh, something more got active. a little bit out of hand. Okay. And he, uh, I, I heard the guys like they were all like riled up about something, you know, and um, somebody came down, he came downstairs five minutes later with like a. Uh, a cut on his cheek like a nice bloody cut mm -hmm. and I came over to him, I went over to him and I said um, what happened you you okay and he's like oh I, I, I hit myself on the wall mm. so I left him alone right I left him alone and 10 minutes later like they're still like they're riled up like whatever it is and he's sitting on the side so I just quietly I went over to the thing to the uh, where we keep the first aid kit Right. And I whipped out, you know, a bandage, uh, alcohol wipe, whatever it is. I went over to him and I said, listen, we both know you didn't walk into a wall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I said, let me clean you up. So I just, I cleaned him up quickly. I looked at him and I said, A, we never judge here. B, I always get your back down here. I said, C, just don't lie to me. I'm not trying, I'm not out to, to get you. Right. You know, and... The reaction after was of just like, it wasn't like an overly, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Like, oh, you're 100% right. Like, whatever mm -hmm. it is. You're not going to get that from right. a teenager. You almost never will. Right. I don't think, I don't know if you've ever seen that here from somebody no. that you've helped. No, not I've never really. seen it. But there was a recognition in his eyes. Right. That he respected the fact that, you know, I did it once 
And then I took action instead of just leaving him be because a lot of times they don't want to be left be sometimes. A lot of times they do. They're not going to ask for help. They're not going to ask for help. Right. And I recognize that. And I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm giving an example of a story of a certain level of like he respected that. And that's something that, you know, we try to do. Mm -hmm. 100% man. This place really gives uh, just good vibes. Good vibes. uh, You know, you live by a code. You know, we try to all live by that code. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a fantastic place. I love seeing you in action, man. Uh, (laughs) You work well with the the at risk, uh, not the at risk, the the teens program. I was going to call it the at risk program. (laughs) Everybody's at risk. (laughs) Our at risk risk program. (laughs) No, um, you're doing a phenomenal job doing that. Um, I'm getting to watch it. I'm so. Grateful that I also was asked to work an extra two nights a week because I really love being here. Yeah. Um, it's wrecked my dating life. Not going <laughs> to <Yeah>. lie. Um, <laughs> if anybody knows anybody single, we got shit over Anyone here. who wants to go Eligible on a date bachelor. <laughs> after 12 p.m. 12 a.m. I'm available. <laughs> or 12 p.m. These are kosher dates, by the way. They right. have to be kosher. I just, I literally work every night till 11 p.m. <laughs> So yeah. the two of us single, by the way, and working our nights here. Yeah. We're only about, uh, what, 18 years apart? Yeah. 16, um, 17, 18. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if the audience wants to know how old I am. No. <laughs> no, I talked about it on Sonny's podcast. Yeah. He, he told me that once upon a time. We were, yeah. 20, it's 23 and 39 as oh. of yesterday. Wow. Yeah. Happy birthday, by the way, Shim. Thank that was a you. great party that we had. Yeah. Got a cake. Yeah, you guys got me really a cake. Nice. It was really nice. Yeah, I really appreciated that a lot. I actually don't like celebrating my birthday, but all you guys getting together and, and it just felt like family. Family. That's all. Yeah, I think that's like the ultimate. We uh, finished each other's sentences there. I know. Oh my God. <laughs> all right. When I say we finish each other's sentences, sandwiches, <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> no, anyway. But no. by the way, that, that thing about birthdays, mm-hmm. I mean, we try to find out. Birthdays because we know that means a lot to a lot of people. That's and awesome. there's at least two, three birthdays a month. I mean, and if we don't know about them and like, so, like I think there was a time one time where it was somebody's birthday and somebody else came up and he's like, oh, you guys forgot about my birthday. And he was a younger guy. Yeah. And I think like the next day somebody went out, bought him a cake and we had like a belated birthday party like two days later. There you go. And then Who somebody doesn't remembers. Love a cake? Who yeah. doesn't love a birthday cake? And everybody gets together and sings happy birthday. Yeah. It's special, you yeah. know. So if let's say, um, like, I, I, we're at like thirty-three minutes or whatever, so we gotta, you know, we gotta get back on the floor soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, if, if let's say this was being heard by um, by parents, yeah, that are looking for a place for their kids to hang out or feel, how could you make people feel safe? Uh, sending their kids here or knowing that their kids are here. Okay. So fun, a funny part about parents listening. Yeah. So I was just listening to Sonny's. Sonny was on Mislabeled. And he's told me this right. another time. Um, you know, we, we, tell, um, uh, we tell parents that if they want their kids to come here, they should tell their kids not to come here. And if we, they don't want them to come here, they should tell them to come here. <laughs> that's good yeah but um listen uh, there's a lot of of safety here um you know especially in a world where you know you can have this argument all the time about what's my kid exposed to what's my kid not exposed to etc cetera, etc cetera. um in today's day and age um and i think here a lot of our clientele if it's somebody, if it's, let's say it's coming from Yeshiva, like, I don't know, um, Chaim Berlin, right? right? If there's a boy coming down from Chaim Berlin, we won't let him down here. And it's, it's, it's uh, you know, you feel bad for the guy because he's struggling, right? right? Let's say. But at the end of the day, you know, we're sort of, the clientele we have to deal with is, you know, we can't have that because... He's part of yeshiva in a greater whole where, you know, he, he unfortunately is out of the box, 
not unfortunately he's unfortunately out of the box in that situation he's his own person he's a beautiful human being mm. but you know we can't have somebody like that down here because then he goes back to school and then we got 10 more guys right because of because of him um i think that there's you look at the numbers of success that we have over the years and we always have this conversation when we talk about the older program mm -hmm. right you look at the success stories that we have i mean we never look for we never <laughs> look for <laughs> i'm getting like aggressive out lose. there Woo. no one's we, fighting yeah just, no. it gets rowdy that's what happens yeah when we um when we uh and i lost my train of thought <laughs> we could no we could when um could when you look out. at all the yeah when you look at all the success stories and we'll never get credit for it which is fine um, you look at, by the way, it was working out. They were working out, yelling at each other. Do one more rep, oh, do one more what? rep, do one more rep. <laughs> <laughs> See, they're all pushing each other. Yeah, it's having each other's backs. But when you look at all the things and, you know, we're never going to get credit for it because that's not, we're not here for credit. You and I, we're not, we're not looking for, oh, wow. You know, look at what they're doing. You know, like yeah. you said, you knew Sonny was like, whatever. You never, I don't think I don't think the guys are gonna remember like because I sat by um, I sat with them playing PlayStation every night for two years. I'm not I'm not really sure that they'll remember that you right. know or or call me one day and say thanks right thanks for hanging on with me during those tough games of you know PlayStation when I was doing yeah <laughs> yeah and I think you know getting back to the how this relates to like a, a parents you know trying to you know think about it, a safe space for their child. Um, you know, if you know where your child is at, you know, where they're holding, I, I think like 95% of the kids coming down here, their parents know that they're coming down here and they're, uh, they approve it and they're okay with it because first of all, we have a reputation of, and I think it's a pretty good reputation of helping people, mm -hmm. um, and creating a, a safe space to, to be in, um, and the facts are is that at the end of the day, this is, you know, a gazillion times better than your child on the streets. I mean, the the tools we have here that we can help, mentors, uh, activities, trips, um, staff members, therapy, uh, which is something that I wanted to get into with you. Yeah. Um, you know, you're you're originally a therapist here, and now you're, uh, yeah. thank God, a member of our... Uh, <laughs> Programmatic staff, pragmatic staff. Yeah. I think I said that wrong, but we'll... Pragmatic? Pr no, pro cr program, sta program staff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what's pragmatic? I mean, you can do with this. <laughs> yeah, pragmatic is like, so I'm a pragmatic <laughs> staff member. <laughs> I'm a pragmatic person. <laughs> we finish each other's Sandwich sentences. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. You know, I think funny enough, this is the first one. I, I think we should not edit edit anything out. Yeah, well, I, so far. So I have, far. I have a couple of about bombs to drop, so. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, so let's get into that. So, I, I remember, I think, the first month that I was here, we, introduced, we got introduced to each other. We didn't always see each other so often because I was coming in three nights a week and not always those were the nights that you were coming in. Right. We I was, only saw each other once a week. But I remember, like sitting in your office and what well, I still call it your office, even though that there are other therapists there. Nice. They should not get Mike is going to get yeah, upset. I was going to say. <laughs> and David. Yeah. No. So we have three, three therapists three here. Three therapists. Of uh, four. Benjamin's still here. And Benjamin. Right. Yeah. We so have we four therapists. Was always a therapist on staff here. Always. So if you want to have like a short session of five minutes, you could pop into a therapist's office and just schmooze. That's great. Yeah. Uh, but there, five nights a week we have therapists here. Yeah. I think that's that's tremendous. And what I wanted to ask you is, and, and, and actually to, that, that helped add to my question, which is I remember sitting with you and, and there was this book by Arthur Janov. Mm. And yeah. you had mentioned that that was a form of, of a modality that you were using. Primal therapy. Yeah. So I was, I was wondering if you would be interested in talking about that. And then also maybe touching upon the fact that here there are no session limits. You know, a lot of times you go to a therapist, yeah. whether it be in a clinic or a private practice therapist. And generally sessions are between 45 and 50 minutes. Um, well, before you <laughs> jump there, 
Um, I do end my sessions. Like, I do do real sessions here, like right, 50 right, no. minutes, sometimes an hour. Right. No, what I'm saying is, is that, and what you touched upon, is that some nights a guy could come in and yes. he needs oh. a 10-minute session. Yeah. And I'm saying that that's, that's another beauty of it is that, you know, they teach you, oh, you can't accomplish unless it's, you know, a therapy hour or right. anything like that. And and I know that for me personally, and I'm not a therapist here, I'm more of a, uh, whatever my role is, is a lot of things. But one of the things is, is that like I've had sessions here for two hours broken yeah. up by, you know, grabbing a Slurpee and then, you know, still talking and then coming back down and talking and changing locations three different times during a session. Or I've had a session while working out with a guy. Yeah. And, you know, I think that there's, you know, yeah, I want to leave that up to you to the right. to talk about um, because I think that it's it's really cool it's the modality and just how time you know can be used in so many different you know to the max no matter what the limit is. Yeah, so I'm very fortunate that uh, for this position because I, f I found out that um, my age group that I like to work with is like 20 to. 35 but really it's these guys they're jewish guys grew up in a very similar world to me um so i identify with it very well um it's it's also the atmosphere here um and i and i i we all stick construction on my office uh or the therapy office not your off, office your office but i i did a lot of work there because i wanted to invest in in the energy of the room because people need it. People need a real, a real office with a real comfort feel to it to really get into the, the meat and potatoes of what's going on. Um, just in quick, um, primal, primal therapy. Um, the way I feel, you know, one of, one of the main things that I work on is let's say so, you know, very often a guy would come in and, you know, their lives are messy in a lot of different areas, their home life, their religion, their jobs, everything is slipping. Um, and if you look at one specific issue, um, you know, you're ignoring a lot of the rest. It's mm -hmm. all tangled up at a sort of base, a base issue. Mm -hmm. And most of the times that issue is about not being... Uh, felt not being understood, not being heard when they were children. So I go back to their childhood a lot to get out a lot of that, uh, whatever that emotion is, rage, um, that they weren't allowed to be themselves when they were younger. They weren't allowed to uh, express who they were. Um, so I give them the opportunity to express, them, express that. And after you let that kind of process happen, we come back to the present and... It's a really relieving feeling because no longer does religion, uh, religion is no longer the enemy per se. It was tangled into the source of the pain. Mm. It got messed. And I'm not sitting here trying to make people religious at all. Right. I don't work from that angle. Right. It's therapy. Right. I keep that out. But that's another thing about our place. Which yeah. Which we don't. But um, we stay away from religious topics uh, in general. A lot of guys here have trauma in that area. Right. Or, you know, and we don't want to influence one way or the other. Just right. Well, I mean, we have learning programs and we have people yeah. that you can talk to. Sure. But it's not, it's, it's not taboo and it's also not required. Right. Meaning it's, it's, it's free for everybody to express themselves in the way that they want to. Yeah. Um, I, I, I um, that, that explanation of, of primal therapy really resonates within me. Yeah, it's one aspect. It's honestly one aspect. There's much more to it, but yeah, it seems very, very Freudian in a sense. Yeah, yeah. What do you? What do you? I don't listen. I I haven't studied Freud so much, uh, <laughs> to be honest. Should we call an expert, <laughs> Kiwi? <laughs> I promise you, I'm licensed to practice. <laughs> but I don't mean to put you on the spot. I everybody, I just I I've graduated school recently. <laughs> For, yeah, so you're very into modalities and, and, and treatments. Um, yeah. You understand that most treatments, most modalities have some real chachma in it. Yeah, and, uh, and it, a lot of it and a lot of the point is childhood because that's when yeah. we're formed. 
Um, that's where our makeup is is created, and that's where we get to this. Um, it helps shape who we are, regardless of, yeah. of, of anybody who's taking a psychology course in college or even school. But regardless of Erickson, Piaget, Margaret Mailer, or any mm-hmm. of these other people, there are certain stages that have to be formed as children, and most of us reach those stages. But if there are some that are unresolved or anything like that, it can it can you know show itself later on. Yeah, and become a part of her personality. And and I haven't uh, when you told me about this modality, I was intrigued <laughs> because I'm like, this is so cool. It's like, okay, I'm angry as a child, so let's just rage. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And it's it's also it's so eclectic and different. And I always I I happen to also resonate with things that are different and not. Like this is off the beaten path. Yeah, a lot of the the well, I don't. There's not a lot of yelling, but the book that Arthur Jano wrote was uh, Primal Scream. He talks, you know, but not. It's not all just about yelling. It's also about. It's literally acting out what you needed to be when you were younger to regain a sense of self. You know, we're trained as children to think about ourselves in a certain way. If we're treated badly, we think we're not worthy. Right. Growing up. So you need to go back to that early source and cry it out and say, no, you're not letting me, you're not letting me be this. You're, you're telling me I'm something else, but I'm telling you who I really am. Even though, because mm-hmm. a kid can't say that to his father, mother, older siblings, teachers. But yeah. now with the knowledge, he can go back and somewhat assume the position and just be like, you are treating me bad. I am not bad. Right. I'm actually good. This is who I am. This is really who I am. You tra- you taught me a false narrative of my personality. Would you would you say that a lot of it is being taught to feel certain things when we were younger when in reality we weren't allowed to feel our own feelings? I mean, yeah, that's another way of saying it. Not feeling our own feelings. I saw such an interesting um, a bit yesterday what I was on it may have been like YouTube or an article or whatever it is and um, one of the things was is that a lot of times children right when they when they hurt themselves right the first thing that a parent will do is you're okay you're okay you're okay right the child never you know slam you know scrapes their knee right and yeah. they're crying and they're sitting on the floor they just fell off their bike and the first thing that the parent a lot of times goes is you're okay you're okay don't worry you're okay you're okay it's okay what's bothering you mm-hmm. and it's so interesting because if you think about it the child is at is so confused because on the one hand his body is telling him that he or she is not okay. Their knee hurts them, right? Right. And they're just being told you're okay, you're okay by the one fig by the one or t- one of the two figures pretty much that they look to for everything, right? So Especially when you're three you or four. Like- Kid falls and gets hurt, and you're like, "Oh my god, you are screwed! <laughs> yo, you just, dude, you just wiped out, bro. That's a nasty <laughs> gash. Yo, yo, they may just have to amputate." <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. No, I, I think that's an arguable point, though. I, it's, I, I think I'll tell you why it resonates. Because when, when, what I'm thinking is like when I got a boo boo when I was yeah. a kid, and my mom, you know, would kiss the boo boo. It did feel better. But that's different than saying you're okay. You're okay. It Meaning is saying you're okay. No, the kiss is sort of like, oh, here's my love. And this this love is sort of like, you know, it, it'll help you feel a little bit better because when you're in a, when something bad is happening to you and you're surrounded by love and by people, and this, by the way, gets back to a lot of the youth here. Mm-hmm. But when you're in, when you're in a situation where you're in a bad situation, you're surrounded by love, you have a better chance of making it out. Yeah. Um, I think that by saying you're okay, you're okay, you're okay, I think the point makes sense to me in a sense that like you can say, oh, are you okay? Oh, you hurt your knee. Oh, let's take care of that. And and I think, I don't know, I haven't, I'm not fully decided if I, if, if I think it's like set in stone, you should, like, I will not be telling my kids you're okay Look after at us. they hurt themselves. <laughs> Look at us single, single people. Single guys teaching. talking about parenting. This is how you parent. <laughs> yeah, so basically when your kid turns 13. <laughs> um, <laughs> Using my broadcasting voice. <laughs> my brother always says I should write a book about parenting <laughs> while I'm single. I call it like a, a parenting guide from a single guy. <laughs> Would I see all my friends make mistakes <laughs> and my siblings? Um, but I think that, that I, I, the reason why what you said made me think of that article or whatever is because 
feeling certain feelings or thinking certain certain things when we're children yeah. that if we weren't allowed to think them when we're children then we have to go through that when we're adults yeah um i think it's sort of like also like when you do like inner child work i don't know if you ever i haven't done inner child work um well it does include i do include that to some degree um it we we always go back to the childhood yeah uh, freudian big time yeah i mean all therapies stem from freud yeah god will be so <laughs> mamish yeah but um i think that's really cool and um I think I I don't know if you can accomplish that in a 20 minute session. You were saying you do generally 45 50 an hour long sessions. But I think you you did touch upon that point again about being able to interact with somebody in a therapeutic way but not in within the boundaries of standard therapeutic um I don't want to say gadarim but like mm. therapeutic um boundaries guidelines yeah. 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 Um, and I think that's so, you know, useful. I think like you said before, I don't know if a guy's going to remember me in 20 years from now because I sat next to him and played PlayStation with him, but maybe he will because yeah. one night you could have had a conversation with him and that conversation could have killed, could have saved his life. Yeah. You know, it's the little things. Yeah. It's, I was actually nervous going from the therapy role to like hanging out on the floor role, you know, like hanging out with at the guys because it's like, now they're really going to see who I am. Who am I really? Before you were like, right, before you were like an obscure figure. Right. I just kind of had my office and, uh, and I had sessions and I didn't, wasn't out here so much. But, uh, but you know what? The same rules that we um, hold for ourselves on the floor, you know, are the same rules that we, uh, that we live by ourselves. It's like. Don't judge yourself too much. Right. You know, and I thought about that. I'm like, and re people here really live by it. Like, I never felt, I, th I had that thought once that, oh my God, I'm going to be, I have to be my true self and I'm scared. I think that's the, the experience of, of a lot of these guys. They're not allowed to be their true selves. And here you can be your true self. You're like, this is me. This is really me. And, and, and it's safe to be that. It's really, really safe to be that here. You know that if somebody tries bullying or like we spoke about earlier, that people are like the the people here who hold by that code are gonna step in. Yeah. And they're gonna like hold your hand. They're gonna they're gonna make sure you're okay. Yeah. Like I, but we care about you, the guy who's being bullied, and we care about the guy who's bullying. Yeah. Cause we know that both are hurting in yeah. different ways. Mm-hmm. Both need a hug. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> everybody needs a hug. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, I think, all, you know, before we get to what, you know, the last thing I want to talk about, but what I want to say, and, and you were touching upon that as well, is that like, you got to be yourself when you're down here, you know, and, and it is at times like a little frightening or you, you yeah. generally don't feel that way. But like when the times do arise that, you know, you're like, have to be myself and like do I want to show that part of me or do I want to like whatever it's always accepted and it's appreciated more than if you would be somebody who you're not because the one thing that I've learned is that teens can read you like a book yeah and if you're not genuine and you're not who you are they latch onto that and they will lose respect for you so fast yeah it's true but also, I just want to comment on one thing. You said read you like a book. I don't think people read books anymore. <laughs> they could read you like, they could watch you like TikTok. You know okay, I mean? or like watch you like a Netflix show. Yeah. Okay, that's a better thing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you went off on that, out of the entire I'm so sorry. hour long. You latched onto that one thing of read you like a book. I'm happy that there hasn't been anything else that I've said. By the way, that you found is like dumb enough to comment on. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's been a long day. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> this is like awesome because like yeah. when you're doing a podcast, like the, the first 10 minutes are always like, it's a little bit like, okay, we're, 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 we're looking, yeah. we're settling in. And like the next 30 minutes fly by. Yeah, it's chill. And you're like, 
this is this is cool. Like we're just talking now. That's it. Hopefully you're just listening, yeah. listeners. Yeah. And driving safe if you're driving. Yeah. Um, what was the last thing you wanted to get to? Yeah, no, so I wanted to get to for you to, you know, we're hopefully going to do this more than once. Yeah. Well, you and I, maybe we'll get a third mic and get, you know, a panel in here, that sort of thing. Who's Mike? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Mike sorry. the karate guy. Oh, okay, cool. I'm talking about a microphone. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> also, <laughs> You're so corny. <laughs> I said a third mic. There's no two mics in here. Is my name Mike and your name Mike? <laughs> I don't know, that's why I was also the one. That was my second question. <laughs> But what? I, <laughs> oh my gosh! Ah, it's a good thing we drink caffeine free soda. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bunch of children. Oh my gosh! By the way, and then like after like we finish this, like there's gonna be like this pumping outro, <laughs> and like anybody who isn't energized after this is oh, like, <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> um, so yeah. So what I want to leave off with is, is with your time spent here. Um. Is there any opinion or anything that you formed on working with teenagers, um, working with this population that it either can, it could either be in, in the same direction as what the world says, or it could be something that you've noticed that's different, but is there any opinion or anything that you've formed in your time here? Um, you can yeah. think about it and I can just, you know, do, 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 do. <laughs> Down, 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 down. What now, is? <laughs> I formed a lot. Um, I used to not want to work with teenagers because I guess I guess I was afraid. I was afraid to. Mm-hmm. One of the things I uh, was afraid of, honestly, was was myself. I was afraid of my own teenage years. Mm. I had a rough. A rough one, I could say. Very confusing. And I was really scared to go in there with other guys. Uh, I think that's really what I discovered. I know you weren't asking me what I discovered about myself and what I learned. You asked me just blanket statement, what have I learned about teenagers? I think from that I learned. Well, what you said before is way more interesting. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know if we have the, this is all. This is a long. No. There's a lot of vulnerability here. I appreciate that. I feel yeah. like I'm, I'm I'm back in school. No, but no, but I, I'm with a good friend, so vulnerability <laughs> is always appreciated. Uh, I could get vulnerable, man. I, I I love that place. Yeah, but um, it's a great location, great vacation spot. Vulnerable awesome. Ohio. <laughs> Yeah, you were saying. Every state has a vulnerable. Oh, really? I, oh. You like that, yo? Yeah, yeah here, we finish each other's hey, sandwiches. sandwiches. Yeah, oh, we got it. Yeah, so you were saying, so what, uh, one opinion that you formed. Um, or, and my opinion is, is that every single guy is, you could love, you could love, uh, there's something lovable about every one of these guys, no matter what they do. It really is, and you latch onto that. It's it's beautiful. I mean, seeing some. I see every night. We have we have a lot of people coming in here, a lot of teens, and um, I used to be afraid to kind of to kind of approach people, approach guys, because I'm like, what if I meet me? <laughs> in a weird way, I'm I'm kind of going. It's I've very experienced esoteric. that as well. I wouldn't know how to handle me if I met me. No. <laughs> It's a, it's a it's a therapeutic point for us as well, or it's a self discovery thing for us as well. Yeah, it's part of the journey. Guys are not scary. They put on a scary exterior. They're not. They just want love and 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 that's it. Yeah, just that, I, I always see that. By the way, the guys who have the scary exteriors are always the guys that you're just like, all right, buddy, here's a hug. Yeah, and like, yo, what are you hugging me for? And you're just like, you need a hug. Yeah, it's it's really sweet. It's pretty awesome. Well, this That's was great. Yeah, this awesome. was this was awesome. Hopefully, we can do this again for sure. Um, I'm and, here Monday to Thursday. <laughs> yeah, I'm here Sunday to Thursday. Come out pretty whoa, much. Whoa. Yeah, no, this is awesome. I'm blessed. I wanna I wanna just say, AJ, you're awesome. Fantastic. Oh, stop. Human. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn no. off this podcast right now. <laughs> no, no, you did. You're doing a great job with the team program. And I'm just wishing you luck on this podcast. I uh, hope you get out 
all kinds of perspectives, hear the guys, hear from more staff. Um, and I feel very honored that I got to help you kick this off. Oh, there was, I thought about this and it was like, I, I want you. Thank you, man. Appreciate yeah. that a lot. And, and, and I'm appreciative of the fact that you've joined the staff and that we're lucky to have you. You're able to double dip is what I told you Tuesday night. Yeah. You double dip <laughs> <laughs> between each one. But, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to work with you and yeah. it's awesome. Appreciate that. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us and uh, stay tuned for our next guest. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.